What a beautiful day it is. Of course, when we have our health, we we'll always give thanks to God Almighty. When you sleep and wake up in a good mood, yes, always give thanks to God at all times for making you to be alive, for counting you among the living today. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. It keeps getting better. You're on to Healthy Living on Dove Television and my name is Olua Femi Odunto. Thank God for another beautiful day like this and thank God that we're always here to let you know one or two things about your health. If you're watching this telecast for the first time, what Healthy Living is all about, it's all about your health. Your health is very important to us. That's why we create awareness for people to know that these are the basic things I need to eat or the basic things I need to do in order for me to keep fit. All this and many more we do here on Healthy Living. I'm not here alone. I have a special guest here in the house with us. She's so dear to us and we appreciate her for coming all the way just to be part of Healthy Living. I have Dr. Priscilla Imade in the house. Thank you so much for joining us, ma. Thank you very much. It's a great privilege yeah, to have it's you. Nice Maybe to I should call again. you Pastor Mrs. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm not in this. <laughs> Maybe you are in the spirit. I'm in the spirit. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us, man. Thank, thank you. you for coming on this platform. Mm -hmm. Dr. Priscilla Imade is a specialist when it comes to the eyes. And most especially, uh, most especially, a lot of us complain about our eyes. So we are here with Dr. Priscilla Imade. She's here to tell us what we need to know about our eyes. What are the things we need to be careful of when it comes to the eyes? What are the shades we need to use? What are the glasses? And, um, you know, part of the thing is just to maintain a good eye. She's always here to let us know one or two things. And it's good to create awareness when it comes to the eyes. But before we let the cat out of the bag, that's for today's topic, we'd like Dr. Priscilla Imade to please lead us in a short prayer because I've, I've said Pastor Mrs. already. I've given her the title, so it's just for her to take it off. <laughs> All right, Ma, please lead us in a short prayer. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everlasting King of Glory, we thank you for the privilege to be here again. Thank you. We man. commit all that we are going to discuss into your able hands. We ask that you will guide us and lead us by your spirit. Amen. Let our viewers be blessed. Amen. And at the end of the day, all glory will be given to your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Hallelujah. Just take it <laughs> off. <laughs> all right, please, to all our esteemed viewers, you can get to watch exciting and interesting program on our YouTube page. Add us on Facebook, Be Do Family. We'll be glad to hear from you. We're looking at the topic, the causes of eye defects in children. Uh, please, if you have your younger ones around you, please kindly let them sit with you and listen to what Dr. Priscilla Imade has to say about the causes of eye defects in children. What are the things we need to know as parents so that we'll be careful when it comes to the eyes of our infants. So please come along with us and be part of it so that Dr. Priscilla Imade will educate us more. Thank you so much, Ma, once again. Please, let's look at the topic. Causes of eyes uh, defects eye in children. In children. Yes. Why do we pick that up? Yes, that yes, asked. yes. This um, topic is very apt because if you look at these days, the statistics is increasing mm. for children who are complaining about their eyes. Visual problems is increasing in children. More children are wearing glasses now mm. than many years ago. And then um, from my experience in the clinic, I discovered that sometimes when parents bring in their children for eye examination and you're like, okay, this child has an eye problem, this child needs to wear glasses, or this child needs surgery, or any other type of care. Most times the parents are taken aback and they're always surprised or at times they just reject your options totally. They are like, why? Many of them complain that they themselves don't have eye problems. So why, why should we? their children be having eye problems? I've seen parents vehemently refuse, you know, their children wearing glasses because they say, ah, how come I don't wear glasses? Why should my child wear glasses? In fact, I had a case where I screened a child in a school. I discovered that this child had glaucoma. Mm. And we informed the school. The school informed the parents. And the uh, father came and said, why? Why should we diagnose the child as having glaucoma? That there's nothing like that in their lineage. That he doesn't have it. 
his parents does not have it. He does not mm. know of anybody having such a problem mm. that he will not allow the child to have any form of care. This child was in SS2, and the glaucoma had already entered almost the, the end stage. And this child had been complaining that he cannot see very well in the school, you know. So these are some of the reasons why we feel we should educate the public. Parents should be aware mm. about some of the causes, some of the things that can result in visual defects in children. Why children can have, you know, eye problems. It is not totally out of the norm mm. for you to have a child having an eye problem. Mm. There are some underlying causes. And then the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm. Because as parents, we may not know everything or get the complete or total picture. There's a tendency for us to just reject the situation. But it is good for us to be abreast, mm. for us to know. So that even when you want to pray, you will be specific in your prayer. You will be able to pray precisely you know, on what the problem is instead of generalizing. So that's why I feel this topic is very, very apt. Mm. Now, let me also say this. When I started my practice of optometry in Nigeria some years ago, going, I practiced for over 16 years, now going over wow. 17 years, yes, wow. of optometry. In my early years of practice, I really didn't see children having so much of glaucoma or having so much high intraocular eye pressures. That's having pressures mm. in their eyes that can lead to glaucoma. Mm. But these days, we discovered that it's on the increase. You find out that children, even in primary school, I secondary school, they come in, we check their eye pressures. The pressures are very, very high. Mm. And you're wondering, why is this so? Mm. Why this sudden change? Why is there a pattern? You know, why is there an increase in mm. eye defects mm. in children? Mm. So I think the topic is very apt. We need to inform, you know, the populace, our, our parents should be aware so that appropriate actions can be taken on time. And let me also say that eye problems are better corrected in childhood than when you leave it to grow with the child into adulthood. Mm. Now, if you look at the anatomical development of the eyes, from the time a woman gets pregnant, just as every other st structure in the body is forming, mm. the same way the eye structures are forming. By the time a child is born, not every structure in the eye is fully developed. Okay. As the child moves from age to age, growing, you know, the structures, they are still differentiating and growing until it gets to, into adulthood before we can say yes. Some structures, just like your teeth, mm. you know, at a certain age, you still have to grow what we call the permanent teeth mm. and all that. Mm. The same thing with the eyes. Mm. The structures are developing as the child is growing. And then any obstruction in that pathway of development mm. can result in a defect. And then the parent can say, oh, what happened? Mm. So that's why we need to look at the, the topic. Mm. Okay. Now, let us look at some of the likely things. It, it, we might not be able to, you know, just exhaust everything, but we are going to look at some of the you know, common things we can reconcile okay. with okay. to know what causes um, eye defects in mm. children. Mm. The first point I want us to consider is what I've called pregnancy watch list. Okay. As a woman, when you are pregnant, you should be very, very careful because the health of the mother can invariably affect the child. The child. Mm. Some women are, you know, always sick during pregnancy. Some women sometimes they have attack of uh, different ailments, and then such can affect you know the fetus in the womb. And when the child is born, there can be different. I've seen a case in my clinic where the woman had an attack of rubella okay. while she was pregnant, okay. and by the time the child was born, so many organs in the body were affected, including the eyes. Oh so these God. are some of the things as parents we need to watch out for. And then as a mother, when you are pregnant. The kind of drugs you take, medications, pills you swallow, goes a long way too to determine the health of your child and then the ocular status of your child. Mm. Some women are in the habit of doing drug abuse while pregnant. Some of these things can affect 
the, child. the child's eyes. And then when the child is born, there could be a defect in the eye. And then you now say, oh, I didn't have eye problem. How come my child is having a problem? Even up to the type of food, you know, things we engage in. Some mothers, too, they smoke, they drink. Some of these things can actually affect the fetus, affect the child in the womb. And this can result in, you know, um, all kinds of problems, including eye problems. And then after, you know, your pregnancy, Remember, we're talking about pregnancy watch list. Yeah. Some of the possible causes, mm. you know, of eye defect. Mm -hmm. If things go wrong in pregnancy, it is possible that a child can develop a defect in the eyes if mm. that problem, you know, affected the eyes. Mm. Now, another thing we should also consider is a method of delivery. Okay. Like previously, you know, some women who have assisted delivery, some those old methods. I don't know if some people still do it now, using forceps to aid a woman. Mm. By the time they are pulling out the head, sometimes some structures in the eyes are affected. Okay. And when the child is born or is growing, mm. they start manifesting and then all kinds of complaints can start happening in the eye. So for some people too, they deliver at home. And then sometimes the process, some babies, you know, may hit their head and, you know, so many processes. Maybe tra uh, this traditional home attendance and all that and all that. And even certain chemicals, certain things they use on the children mm. after delivery. Mm. Sometimes we don't know the effects of mm. these things on the eyes. Because the eyes are very, very delicate. Anything that can, you know, affect any of the structures at any stage can result in a vision defect. So mothers should be careful. We should be careful of our hair status while pregnant, mm. the kind of drugs we take while pregnant, and then the method of delivery, and then the care you give to the child. Mm. When the kind the child of food is you also eat too matters. Exactly. Mm. So those things, they matter. And then when we talk about smoking, some people say, oh, no, I don't smoke. But if you don't smoke and you live in an environment where Maybe. people smoke, mm. it can also go a long way to, you know, result is in defects because people are different what you can react to might be different from what i will react to even the, re the level of susceptibility differs from one individual to another mm. and then people still say i don't smoke but you live in an environment where automobiles you know they pollute the air and you inhale this into your system you are you use all kind of things to cook mm. and all that so some of these things you never can tell mm. they can go a long way to affect the health of 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 your child then when the child is born, the actual head of that child too matters. Mm. Some children, when they are born, some can have jaundice, some can even, as they are going, have a measles attack, some, all kind of childhood diseases. Mm. Any child, for instance, that have measles, there's a tendency that the measles can affect eyes. I've seen a child that had measles at, um, I think, about six months or thereabout, and the measles resulted in cataracts for the child. So all these things, we need to be careful as parents so that we can put, you know, um, control Custom. them mm. ahead. So that when this child is grown, you know, oh, I cannot pinpoint where this problem is coming from. I don't have it in the family, mm. okay? And then sometimes, too, accidents. As your child is growing up, your child is learning how to walk. Or maybe the child is still on that one. You give the child to a lesser adult to carry. As if they are carrying the baby from one point to another, the baby falls down and hit the head. Sometimes they might not even tell you. You may not even know. So some of these fall, accidental falls, when they um, affect the eye, in some children too, it can result in eye defects. Hmm. And I know too, some mothers are very aggressive. They beat their children mercilessly. Some can give their children dirty slap in the eye. Why? At the end of the day, some of these structures in the eyes too can be affected. I have seen cases in my clinic where due to accident, you know, some children have had issues with their eyes. And then in schools too, the way these children play, you can be in a school and then somebody, you know, use biro or pencil to punch mm. another child's eye. Yeah. Uh -huh. By the time you look at, you put them together, before you know it, the child is developing eye problem. And uh, maybe you may have forgotten. At much later years, you say, oh, this child has, I say, no, 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 it's not in my family. It's not this, it's not that. So these are some of the things. One has to be careful. And then I've also um, seen a child that was affected by typhoid. After treating typhoid, this child couldn't see again. Jesus. The, yes, the treatment. So even the kind of drugs you give your children, the matters, matters. especially steroids and antibiotics. Many mothers were abused 
steroids and antibiotics. We just give them, oh, the child, the body is hot. We just give. Please, it's good to avoid self-medication. And then there are certain drugs you shouldn't just do over the counter. It has to be by the doctor's prescription or a pharmacist before you, you can administer these uh, mm. drugs to the, to the children. It's just like the common ones we know, like tetracyclines. If you give it to a child, you know it can color the teeth. Mm. I've seen children with brown teeth because they took tetracyclines. And I've seen children have eye problems because they took certain chloramphenicol infusions as children. Mm. So one has to be very careful the kind of medication that we give our children. Our children. These things can result in an um, eye problem. And then, more recently, we have also found out that um, children who stay indoor so much of the time Two can also develop eye problems. Indoors? Yes. <laughs> you know, each and every day, scientific researches are going on, and then they are being published. A study was done in Singapore, in one of the Asian countries, and they discovered that children, because they don't do outdoor activities, they're always indoor from their room to their school, from their school back to, you know, they watch video, they play video game, they are not exposed to the sun and all that, that over time, such children tend to develop, you know, eye problems such as myopia or refractive error compared to other children that were yeah. exposed. Mm. And, you know, family, let's come to terms with this. You know, in the, the days of our parents, or even when we were growing up, anyway, mm. we are of the younger generation. <laughs> You know, we trek, we walk to school. Of you course, yes. You know that yes. process of walking, those No lot. AC. <laughs> no AC. You would walk to your school. Trekking is a natural form of You trek every day. You trek in yes. the morning, you trek in the yes. afternoon. You trek and back you home. Play, you do a lot of outdoor activities. Mm. All these things, they help to strengthen your general health. And then, you know, the eye, too, is not in isolation. Mm. It helps to strengthen your yeah, eyes. Right, well. But this, these days, it's no longer there. Even the children we have now, we move them from AC bedroom to AC um, sitting room to There's AC also, car also AC to classroom. AC classroom. You understand? So right. some of these things, this lifestyle change mm. on the long run, when you put them together, they also affect you know our eyes. Mm. And then another school of thought, I've also said that um, when children stay too long on visual display units, mm. that the eyes can be affected. What I mean by visual display unit, phone. You see some children, they are addicted to their phone, their iPad, iPad their phone, what? pad, 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 you know, their I... television, mm, their mm, computer, mm. and all that. The more addicted you are to these things, mm. because if you look at the science behind scene, mm. it's actually rays mm. that come from the object you're looking at mm. that goes straight through a pathway in the eye. What you said remind me of, um, was it like a, a day ago or something? I was carrying my baby and my boss was busy on his phone. Do you know, he started looking at, at the phone. phone. Oh, I as was like, young oh. as he is, less than a year. How old, how old is this baby? When I said, he said, no, no, no. He was, he was just staring at the phone. He wanted to like take the phone. That's okay. What do you want? Do you want to take selfie? Okay, take a picture. He was, he was that is it. seriously. Yeah, the child is attracted. I was like, That's no. the world we live in now. That is it. I'm so sorry. all these things, they add up. So you might like, oh no, we don't have eye problems in my family. But there are some cumulative effects that can result your child having an eye problem different from you know what you could think or imagine mm. and then uh there's a study that i've also said that um reading affects the eyes yes they say the more you read the more eye problems manifest mm. and that could be true if you look back let's take a, a, an instance a child that is say eight year old that is living in the city going to school and a child that is eight years old in the village going to the farm, most likely among these two children, if both of them have myopia, most likely the myopia will manifest more. Myopia means short sight readings, we might, or refract any form of refractive error. We manifest more in the child that is in school reading than the child that is in the farm. Mm. So, I don't know if you understand what yeah, I'm saying. Yes, so that's why the more you read, when you read actually, the eye does more work. So a lot of pressure eyes. is mm. put on the eye. And if you look at the volume of work our children are doing these days, mm. my child that was in the primary school some years ago was doing 16 subjects oh my in the primary school. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, 
What are they teaching you? <laughs> what are you learning? <laughs> you understand? So the volume of work is much. Even in our secondary schools these days, the volume of work is much. But, uh, when, when you get to the time where they usually have their break, their long break, you find out that most parents will say, ah, no, my daughter or my child is not going for any summer class. Yeah. Stay at home. Mm -hmm. Do your summer at home. I beg. Don't go. That, you that understand? Because it. by the time you resume, you have workload. A lot. You know, some, a some, lot. Some assignments. Yes. The other day, my daughter brought an assignment and I had to uh, spare bind. I had to do oh, projects. That think, is it. Fouled. I'm doing projects. <laughs> what is all this? That is, that is it. That's the world we live in. Oh, my so God. a lot. But we cannot now say that because reading can affect the eyes that we children should not read. read. No, no, no. no. They have to but read. we have to take necessary precautions mm. to ensure that, you know, the negative effect doesn't, uh, over, yes, put off the positive effect. And then finally, we'll come to the reason we know, mm. genetics. Okay. Most times, eye problems are inherited. Oh. That is the one that we are all familiar with. All mm. the other points I've noted before, I've talked about Pregnancy watch list when a woman the is kind pregnant. Of medication yes, you use. the method of delivery, mm. the health of the child, mm. then accidents when the child have an accident or doing excessive indoor activities, reading, and then now we want to talk about genetics, hereditary factors. You see, these are some of the things that can cause eye defects in children. I think this last one is the one we are all common familiar with. with. Family. Yes. Okay, yeah, my family yes. used to. Yes. But the other ones, we uh, don't hey, know that. We don't Beating of that child, child, you slap yes, the Yes, you don't know that something yeah, can yeah. happen. Mm. Yeah, and then even on this um, genetics, I've also had issues with some couple in my clinic because they come in, they are like, I don't use glasses. Nobody in my family uses glasses. So How come? <laughs> now, when we talk about genetics, some genes are recessive, some are manifest. Mm -hmm. Let's give a practical example. Maybe in a family, you have the father black, the mother is black. Sometimes, if you have four children, you can find one of the children fair. Mm. You know, we're discussing before now about you. I was saying your son is very fair. And you said, oh, your grandparents and all that. <laughs> yes, that is what it means. The same thing with eye problems. Sometimes, because you are not using glasses as a parent, does not mean that your child do, cannot wear glasses or your child does not have an eye problem because you are not wearing. Mm. It's possible the gene was recessive in you and it's manifest in your child. Mm. And then apart from that, if you also look back at history, mm. most times our parents are not as educated as we are no. or as your children are now. Of we course. just talked about reading. Did you have to read the volume of books your children are reading now? Mm -mm. Yeah. So those are some of the things. Some people say, ah, my father is 99 in the village. He can read Bible. He can read newspaper. He can read this. So I why should it. I? Uh, yeah. You understand? Sometimes you find out that some of these, you know, manifestations may not be due to the use to which they put their eyes. Somebody that just read for like 30 minutes, one hour a day, compared to somebody that is reading for hours a day. It's, mm. not the same thing. it's not the same thing. The effects on your visual pathway, on your visual system will be different. Mm. More strain, more visual stress, more visual demand will be placed on the person that is doing reading, mm. active reading, somebody that is in school, that is doing PhD or doing master's or doing a university degree. Mm. The kind of visual stress you put on the eye is different from somebody that is just reading for, for pleasure. So those are factors we need to um, consider. Exactly. Mm. So under hereditary factors, there are some eye problems that can be inherited. Number one among them is what we call refractive errors. Okay. When we talk about refractive errors, we mean things like myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, that's long sight, short, short sight, sight, astigmatism, and all that. The common one we know of here is myopia. That's short sight. Short sight is the older word, the more medical word now is myopia. myopia. Yes, mm. that's the common one. Most time you find a child in school, say, oh, I cannot see the board. My teacher writes on the board, I cannot see. So most time when children are short-sighted, people tend to notice that more mm. than any other class of um, refractive error. Mm. So refractive errors can be inherited. And then certain pathologies too can be inherited. Okay. Things like glaucoma. Mm. Glaucoma so they can, can, yes. Wow. Oh. So if a father has been diagnosed of glaucoma, please, I beg you in Jesus' name, try to take your children for visual examination to prevent glaucoma from setting in. Okay. If any member of the family too have been, 
have been diagnosed. diagnosed. Maybe your sibling. You too, you need to go and check. Because be sure glaucoma, that. yes, can flow in family. And we've talked about glaucoma before on this program. Mm. Glaucoma right now is the second leading cause of irreversible blindness in the world. Mm. Blindness from glaucoma cannot be reversed, unlike cataract. Mm. So prevention it's is better. the key word. Mm. So some of these things, we need to take proactive measures to prevent them. And then pterygium too can also be inherited. We talked about pterygium too, the growth. There's a growth in the eye mm. that comes on at about a particular age. Okay. So you also find that in some families at about certain ages, they have that. Yes, this growth. is, they keep coming up. Mm. So one has to be on the watch list. You have to. As you are following it up physically, you can also follow it up spiritually mm. because. You know, you just find that some things are just flowing from generation to generation. generation. As you are breaking it in the spiritual realm, also take practical steps to break, break them too in the physical, physical realm. Yes, by mm. going to see your doctor. <laughs> Catara too can also be inherited. Okay. So we have to be careful. We have to watch that. And then your family history is important. In medicine, we can hardly treat anybody without first looking through the family history. Okay. Even biblically too. Mm. Before you, you know, History, they say you look at the foundation. The Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, what, what can the righteous, righteous do? do? Mm. You build new ones. Mm, our pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you that title now, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's coming up now. <laughs> so the family history is very important. Mm. You take time, look back at your family. Look mm. at what is on and what is not. And then, as much as possible, try to prevent what you can. Remember when we talk about the eyes, prevention is the watch list. Mm. We are not looking at how to cure eye problems, because most times eye problems can really not be cured. That's the truth. So prevention yes, is yes prevention is, is the key. So, and then once we have done that, the next thing we need to do that can also... We'll, we'll come back to that next thing that we need to do. Uh, our time is fast spent, and I know a lot of people are out there, they want to call. In fact, someone called, I have to just, okay, this is not the time for us to keep the call. But right now, we'll go on a quick break, and after that, we'll be right back. Don't go away, just stick around. We'll be right back. Thank you. It keeps getting better and better. Another opportunity to be blessed by divinely inspired programs on the Dove Television channel has just been made available. You can now download the Dove Television application on your Android phones, iPhones, Blackberry phones, various tablets and iPads. Just visit the appropriate app store depending on your device to download the application which enables you to watch programs and listen to the word of God from anointed men all through the day. Dove Television, on direct to home decoder, on free to air satellite, on mobile internet TV and now on mobile apps, Dove Television, taking back the power of the air. Welcome back, still on Healthy Living on Dope Television. To all our esteemed viewers, it is high time you give us a call. The number to call will be displayed right there on your TV screen. But remember, our own commandment here is to mute the volume on your TV set or reduce the volume on your TV set so that we can hear you loud and clear. We have our doctor in the house, Dr. Mrs. Uh, Priscilla Imadi, who is also, I'm saying she's going to be a pastor very soon. No? <laughs> All right, still on the, um, the eye defect in our children and also as an adult, yes, please. Um, I know a lot of us are paying attention to what we've been saying. Kindly give us a call. You might have one or two people in your family you need to render an assistance to them or yourself too. Yes, you yeah. need to check up. Go for eye checkup. And be sure that you don't have all of these things. Uh, you know, just like the last um, last point you mentioned that hereditary. A lot of us are ah, okay. It's from my great grandmother. I remember my mother used to. But you know, there are some other things too that you need to put in check. 
and be sure that it's not from your great grandmother. Yeah. You know. So please, let's uh, all be our brother's keeper. Give us a call and uh, mute the volume on your TV set so that we can hear you loud and clear. All right, back to you, Ma. Yes. Now we are going to look at how to detect eye problems mm. in children. There are three basic ways. We look at the appearance of the child, the mm. behavior of the child, and the complaint of the child. You find some children, they have, you know, always having persistent red eye. When we talk about appearance, some children, they have a past four eye. You see that maybe the eye is moving to different directions and all that. Some of them, their eyes are always swollen. Some, they are always scratching the eyes and all that. When you notice any of these uh, symptoms, it's good to take these children for eye examination. Mm. Please don't overlook any eye problem. Don't say you know what to do because what you think it is might not be. And we have said when you uh, detect and treat eye problems early in a child, it really helps to prevent a, a greater problem happening in the eyes of that child in future. Mm. And one of the major culprits we have noticed that as eye care practitioners is that parents delay in bringing their children for eye examination. Children are the least likely group in the family to have an eye examination. A father can go for eye check, a mother can go, but for children, they will say, shut up, keep quiet. You are not, you can't yeah, go for eye baby. check. That is not correct. It is at that babyhood or that childhood that you should correct that problem so that that problem will not grow with that child into adulthood. And that's where we are missing it greatly here in Nigeria. And then sometimes when you give glasses to children at a tender age, it doesn't mean they are going to use the glasses even into adulthood. There are some problems that can be better corrected when that child is still small. And then as the child grows, it can drop the glasses. But from what we have found here is that parents would hardly ever allow you to use glasses as a method of correction for their children. And then before you know it, everything, you know, become so great as mm. because as the child is growing, the magnitude of the problem too is also growing, growing. with the child. All right, we have our first caller. Hello? Hello? Hello, yes, you, hello, sir. Thank you for calling. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good morning. My name is Charles. Abuja. All right, Mr. Charles, go ahead with your question. Thank you. I want to, I want to uh, really thank the doctor, Dr. Priscilla, okay. for the presentation. That was a wonderful uh, clarification that has to do with medical science and design healing. I really think the Lord in the spiritual too. Mm. Um, my question actually is uh, on the, you know, nowadays on the, on, uh, Really activities of the children go to nowadays. You see that their homework, everything is being based on computer, computer, computer. Um, is there an awareness that is being created in terms of uh, uh, protection of the eyes, in terms of screen, screen filter, computer glasses, and the uh, reduction of the uh, contrast on computers for children so that they will be uh, they will be careful about this? That's number one. Number two, you said something about inherited problems of the eyes. Can somebody with myopia inherit uh, long sighted too? So you said myopia is long sighted. Then can somebody that is uh, a father that is short sighted, is it possible for uh, a child to be born and the person is uh, long sighted? Okay. All right. Thank you so much for your Thank question. You well. Yes, you're welcome, you. sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Charles from Abuja. Yes, mm. those two questions, they are very salient. Mm. Number one, we've discovered that because of, you know, uh, increase in science and technology, our children these days, they work on their iPads, their laptops, and all that. that there should be a protection for your children. I think children. we mentioned that. Yes, yeah, there was yes. The time you were saying something that when yes. you traveled. Yes, uh, yeah. yes. I remember in U.S., yes. General Electric, they did some sets of television where they tested it. They said the emission from the TV set was above the permissible limit. And they had to withdraw all those sets from the homes of people that have bought them. Actually. But here in Nigeria, we don't have people who regulate such things. So you're starting from your tablet, your phone, your computer, and all that. There should be some form of certification on them. And then the ch children's eyes should be protected. There should be some f uh, form of screen filter on those computers, and then for children who use them regularly, they can wear computer protection glasses. They are glasses you can use to protect your eyes while you are working on the, on the computer. computer. So that is very good. And then for a, child, a father that is myopic, you know, giving birth to a child that is hyperopic, it's possible because the father and the mother comes together. 
I know ge genetic mutations are not that uh, you know on display here. Mm. It's possible somebody in their line is just like a father is dark, giving birth to a, a child that child. is fair. Mm. So it can happen either way, either from the mother or from the father. It depends. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but refractive error basically is is the same. All right. Thank you so much. So we're still expecting more calls. Thank you, Ma, okay. for more clarification of what you just said now. All right. And then, as we were saying before, parents want to also adv uh, advise our parents should please stop this notion of saying that their children pretend a lot. Okay. We'll come back to that. Hello? Hello, good morning. Hello. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. All right, we lost that call. Children pretend a lot. Yes, that's mm. the common excuse that parents give, that even schools give, and it has costed us a lot in both magnitude of error and sometimes even in loss of lives. They say children pretend. Yes, children pretend. But sometimes behind that pretense, the truth is there. Mm -hmm. So it's the onus it's on us as parents to find out if these children are actually pretending. And when it comes to eye problem, as a mother, you cannot find out in your house whether that your child is pretending or not. You need to take that child for an eye examination. Let the doctor tell you that this child is pretending. You don't assume at home as a parent or as a teacher that the child is, is pretending, mm. okay? Mm. And then when we also um, put this into perspective, we discover that some other eye conditions that may be prevalent in children, apart from refractive error, things like amblyopia, Mm. That's the one. We have a message I would like us to take. Someone sent a text. It said, can eye problem also affect the ear uh, of a child to the point that she hardly hears? That's what the mother just sent just now. Yeah, uh, well, okay. um, anatomically, there is a link between all the structures in the head. The ear, the nose, the eye. Sometimes when you are crying, mm. maybe your nose will be running. Mm. Sometimes you are coughing. Mm. Your nose is running, your, your eyes, eyes and then, yes, there is a correlation. So if the child is experiencing such, you should see an ENT specialist. Mm -hmm. And then you can also see your eye specialist as well. All right, all right. We have another call. Hello? Hello, good morning. Hello, thank Hi. you for calling. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Yeah, I'm uh, Mrs. Vivian Okoli. I'm calling from... Uh, Lagos making. All right, go ahead with your question. All right, so I'm, I'm listening to what she just said now. And then um, she said, I'm listening on the head care. All right, thank you. And then she said um, that children living in indoors that it could cause an um, eye problem then and that because they're not exposed to the sun from school back home and all that so now my question is i have children and you know when they come back from school they stay indoors and their lesson teacher comes and take them lessons and the following day too from home they go back to school now since i don't want them to go outside because i don't want them to mingle with people all those same um, children outside and i'm not actually with them Hello? All those, yeah, all those children that have bad um, character, bad attitude. Okay. And now, so should I be going out with them time to time? Since I don't have time, I'm staying at, I'm working at Lake A, but my children are over there at uh, Mokoko, someone taking good care of them. So what should I... Hello, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes, you yes, we got, go you, we got you, I got the question. What should I, what, what shall we do? I got the question. Okay. What can she do? Yes, yes. The, the she, answer she lives, is... Yeah, she works in Lekki, actually. Of mm. course, she will move down to Lekki and, you know, that, that's, her children are in Okoko. That's what we are saying. Hand. Lifestyle is the greatest problem we have now. We, mm. Now we have more occupational women than those days. You need to look for a way around it because you can't keep your children indoor 247. You need to give them time, at least to interact with the environment, the atmosphere. They need to play. They need to, you know, walk around your garden. You know, those days we used to have gardens in our home. Mm. You would go there, go and play in the sand, mm. play with your vegetables and mm. all that. And, oh, 
all these things, they add value. They have, they add health mm. to your, to your being. Mm. So we, want, we just have to look for a way around it. Keeping your children indoor because you work in somewhere is not the best. It's not the best at all. You need to look for a way around it. At least give them some time to play around. Mm. Remember, we say vitamin D is mm. gotten from the sun. At mm. least that early morning sun, those days, when we are in school. At about that time, they will ask you to come out in the assembly or yes. after your assembly. Yeah. You do some periods and then you come out, yeah. you play, you do some exercises. Sometimes the assembly and then you go in take again. Longer yes, than so some expect. of those things, they matter. Mm. We just try as much as possible to make up for okay. whatever it is that is mm. causing the defect. All right. Uh, please, doctor, I had my child with face presentation and he has one of his eyes dimly open. What do mm. you suggest? Uh, well, if the eye is dimly open, we call it ptosis. Okay. That means one of the eyelids is drooping. Some of the innovations, the muscles that are supposed to pull the eye up is not working correctly. It depends on the age of the child, what caused it. You need to see an ophthalmologist. They will be able to advise you best. All right. And we what have to another do. call. Hello? Hello, Hello, thank you for calling. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. I'm Elizabeth from Ostosto. All right. Elizabeth, go ahead with your question. Please, I just want to appreciate Dr. Cecilia for coming out at least to explain us more about eye defect. She said something about slapping a child. That slapping a child can affect, can cause eye defect. Mm. I don't really know if she can speak more on that because, like me as a mother, in any little offense, I slap my my little baby. You have to stop it, though. That's an abuse. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank Please, you. you have to stop slapping your child. Stop. Please. That's child abuse. Stop <laughs> that. Even when you slap, slap the ear, you know it can result okay. in deafness. Mm. I've, I had a woman in my clinic that the husband slapped, and she had a retina detachment. Oh my yes. God. Yes. How much more children? Those are, I mean, trauma. We call it trauma. Blunt trauma. Blunt trauma to the eye can result in, you know, serious eye defects that one can never pray for. So please, let's avoid all those. And then if you have myopia, the first thing is for you to have a, a, a family optometrist that you can always relate, relate with. Mm -hmm. and you can always discuss your eye problems with. Go for regular checks. And then based on the type of myopia that you have, because there are different types. There are some that are degenerative mm -hmm. and all that. The doctor will advise you appropriately on what mm -hmm. to do. Mm. Uh, can refractive error actually be corrected with the use? Okay, I'm coming back to that. With the use of glasses, if yes, how? Yes. Okay. The first line of correction for refractive errors is glasses. Okay. When we say refractive error, we mean short sight, long sight astigmatism, or mm. myopia, hyperopia astigmatism. The first line of correction is glasses. When glasses cannot help, we can do what we call refractive surgery. When that cannot help, there's also before surgery, you can talk about contact lenses mm. as corrections. All right. Hello, Dr. Please, what causes um, tears from the eyes, even when one is wearing glasses? Okay. There are so many things, depending on the age. Oh. Some people who have what we call dry eye syndrome can have excessive tearing. Okay. Sometimes if the, your glasses are weak, mm. you can have tearing. Okay. So it's good to go for an eye examination. The doctor will be able to pinpoint exactly what is making you here, even with your glasses. All right, we have a call. Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Yes, please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Yeah, I'm calling from Ghana. My name is Ben. All right, go ahead with your question. Yeah, I, I have so much problem with my dad. I don't know if you have a picture that you can if I want to do something or if I want to buy it, I always encourage my eyes to come to my eyes. Because I don't know if I go, there's nothing I really do because there's nothing I do. If I eat the glass, I do not have the effect of the glass. I don't know the program. All right, thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, it's a call from Ghana. From Ghana. Please, you need to go for an eye check. Mm. And if the response you are getting from a particular clinic is not satisfactory, you can seek a second opinion in another clinic. Mm. Okay, uh, uh, this is Ejiro saying, please, now, what is squinty and its cure? Yeah, squint, squint, mm. squint. That's mm. uh, the one we call that pass for. 
the one oh. we call the strabismo when one eye moves mm. okay due to muscles that are weak mm. it can, you should take that child for an eye examination the doctor will advise appropriately there are, in some cases they may have to do surgery it depends sometimes training visual training may be embarked on phone but it depends on the age of the child and the causative factors mm. you should try and seek correction if the person is still young Okay, and yeah. if you want to speak with Dr. Priscilla Imade on it also, I mean, just for that clarification, uh, definitely her number will be scrolled there, uh, or also email will be scrolled before the end of the program. You can get to call her. If you call, her lines are busy. Please do send her a text and say, this is from Mrs. Ejiro. I was the one that asked this particular question. Where can I get to meet you or something? Thank you so much. We have another call. Hello? Please mute the volume on your TV set so that we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you so much and God bless you. All right, on a final note on what we need to know. Slapping of your child is not good He said, no, no, that's child abuse. <laughs> you can beat the child bum bum now. <laughs> I, I think that's better. Or flog now. Or only flog uh -huh. Bring your uh, hand I mean, There are other ways to go about it. Hmm. Uh, let's avoid anything, anything trauma hmm. to the eye. Please, hmm. as parents, we should try and avoid it. I'm sure as a parent, you will feel guilty of if course. you got to the doctor's clinic or to the eye clinic and then the optometrist tells you that it's as a result of the slap, slap. you gave your child ah. or whatever. Even some, they blow, they punch. Yeah, they are children that caused the child the visual damage. <laughs> so as much as possible. We <laughs> All right, we have a call. <laughs> <laughs> we have a... Hello? Hello, good Good morning. All right. Uh, please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Thank you for calling. Funke <laughs> from K2. All right, Funke, go ahead with your question. Thank you for calling. I just want to ask why a, a, an infant of three weeks will be having more call from the high. Mm. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll speak with a, a pediatrician. He said I can use a simple or a single sort of eye job. I have not used it, though. I don't know why an infant of three weeks will be having more cold. Most cold likely, cold. that child got it from you. Mm. Mm. Okay. It's infection, especially through the birth canal. As the child is coming out, you can pick it. You know, an infection. Mm -hmm. So, you need to treat that uh, child. Mm -hmm. If you are really concerned, you can take the child to see an optometrist or an ophthalmologist uh, here so that, you know, appropriate medications will be given to you but most likely that child picked it up from the mother and then it should be it should be treated okay we'll take this as our last caller before we... uh hello hello good morning hello sir please tell us your name and where you're calling from thank you for yeah, calling. my name is, my name is Olawale. i'm calling from Lagos state all right mr Olawale, go ahead with your question yeah my question goes as what is the relationship between uh um, when your eyes is itching you and you keep on scratching it, then it becomes red. So, does that relate to a um, high defect? How old are you, sir? I'm 19. How old are you, sir? I'm 19, 19. Okay, 19 years. Okay, okay. Most likely it might be allergy, what we call allergic conjunctivitis. Mm. The more you scratch, the more sweet it becomes, mm. and then your eyes will get red. Mm. Yes, it can be an eye defect. Mm. So mm. you need to go and see your optometrist. Mm. A proper examination will be done, and then medications can be given. Mm. Appropriate advice, too, will be mm. given on maybe other things you you should do. All right, then, just please, mm. for children, the major thing we are trying to avoid here is to prevent a condition we call amblyopia. Okay. There are certain eye conditions that if you don't address them in childhood, and you allow it to grow with the child, can result in a condition called amblyopia. Mm. And amblyopia today is a condition in a child that, you know, even with glasses, with surgery, the child vision cannot be improved. Mm. So we don't want our children to fall into that category. Okay. And unfortunately, many children are presenting with such conditions because their parents delayed okay. in seeking help mm. for these children. Okay. Even some of them have what we call low vision. Mm. Some of these, they, they, they are very difficult to correct. So let's mm. try and avoid this. Or even children developing glaucoma mm. or cataract or as the case may be. We don't pray that our children should have any of these eye conditions mm. that we have uh, talked about. But as parents, 
we need to look at you know these things holistically mm. let us not be myopic about, about our it. children's eye health mm. especially the eyes mm. because from my experience i've seen that parents are even more proactive mm. to act in other areas but when it comes to the child's eye health they're always very slow mm. and then when it comes to glasses or surgery in fact it becomes a no-no mm. but what we are saying is that as optometrists as you know in my capacity as a chairperson of Women Optometrists Lagos State Chapter, we are saying that we care about women and the eyes of their children. Mm. And then glasses, drugs, um, surgery, and others are ways we can correct vision, vision. Mm. problems in children. Mm. So please let us not shy away from it. Whatever the option that is presented to you, wait, pray about it, and then use it so that your child's health, your child's eyes can be the best for it, even as your child grows into adulthood. All right, thank you so much for giving us this um, good awareness, creating awareness, educating us as parents and as individuals with our uh, color that called and, you know, with the beating of that child, please, the bomb bomb is there for you to spank your baby very well. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Priscilla Made. Of course, our time is far spent and we have to give thanks to God Almighty yeah. for allowing this platform to go and to educate people out there. This is a short prayer from you, ma. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for all that we have discussed, even concerning the causes of eye defects in children. We ask, O oh Lord, that you heal us of all our diseases, whether in the children, in the adults, and in any part of our body. Hmm. But uh, above all, O oh God, help us to have wisdom as parents, Amen. even to treat our children's eye problem Amen. as at when due. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for hearing Thank us. You, we give you all the glory for Hallelujah. all we have discussed today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Ma, once again for coming. God Amen. bless you in thank Jesus' name. Thank you very much for having me. All right, to all our esteemed viewers, I want to say a big thank you for staying tuned to Dove Television. To everyone in Dove TV, God bless you and keep you safe in Jesus' name. Amen. To everyone out there, to all parents, to every individual out there, it's good to always take precaution when it comes to your eyes. Get to see your doctor. Ask one or two questions. It's not a bad idea for you to do. I want to say thank you once again. God bless you and keep you safe in Jesus' name. Amen. Stay tuned to Dove Television for more programs coming your way. But remember to always log on to your Facebook. Dove Television is on Facebook. Others will confirm you as a friend or be Dove family. Yes, come be part of our family and also get to watch exciting and interesting program on our YouTube page. God bless you once again. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.